I've got a lot of libertarian bones in my body, and I share a lot of what you believe. But then it gets to drugs, and that's where conservatives and libertarians part ways. I think that marijuana should not be classed with the other drugs. Marijuana is not good for you, but arguably less harmful than alcohol. So we do harm when we lump it in with the harder, more addictive drugs, cocaine, crack, heroin, etc., that really do addict people terribly. So I would like to separate marijuana by decriminalizing and then having a real war on drugs, not the fake war we've got going on right now. So that's where I am, and I would bet that you would go further down that road. And in fact, your literature here says you would release all nonviolent drug offenders from prison. So elaborate. The drug war is our domestic Vietnam. It is an unwinnable war that the United States government has been engaged in for 30 years. We didn't have the kinds of crime problems that we have today until the federal government declared war on drugs in the 1960s. As a matter of fact, the murder rate was dropping from the end of prohibition through to the early 1960s until the war on drugs started, and then the murder rate started going back upward again. I can't think of anything that would do more to reduce crime in this country than to end the war on drugs completely and fully and get the federal government completely out of it. The federal government cannot keep these drugs out of the country. It cannot keep them out of our schools. It can't even keep them out of prisons. So why should we believe that more money or tougher penalties or anything is going to change that? All that has happened is that it has financed tremendous gang warfare in this country. It has run the price of drugs up so much that gangs are fighting over territories, and innocent people are being killed in drive-by shootings. Pushers go on to elementary and high school campuses to try to addict kids at early ages. All of these things would not exist if drugs were legal. Before the First World War, a 14-year-old could walk into a drugstore in this country and buy heroin, and yet there was no drug problem as we know it today. Nobody was worried about where kids are going to get addicted on heroin. Nobody was worried about drive-by shootings. None of these things existed when drugs were legal. Okay. It is drug prohibition that has caused all of the things that we associate with drugs today. You could. You could go into a drugstore and buy heroin or uh, cocaine, and people did. And it is my understanding of history that people began to more and more, and there began a big addiction problem, hence the laws against drugs. Well, there's a lot of literature on that subject, and I don't pretend to be an authority, but a lot of literature on what it was that prompted these laws. Uh, some say, for instance, that the laws against opium were passed as an anti-Chinese thing, and that the laws against heroin were passed as an anti-black thing, and so forth. And I don't know whether that's true, but I don't think that it is necessarily true that the laws were passed because more and more people were becoming addicted. So then in Harry Brown's world, a 14-year-old should be able to go into a drugstore and buy heroin. Yes, which does not mean that he will, will do so or that your children will. And if we did not have a war on drugs, your child would be less likely to do so, and you would be able to influence him a lot more than you can today. Today, there are so many things working against your parental guidance with that child. But if this war on drugs didn't exist and there weren't gangs that were peddling these drugs, Smith Klein doesn't go around the country trying to hook people on their drugs. Bayer doesn't go on to high school campuses and try to get kids to take aspirin. Legal drug companies don't do that sort of thing. It's only when these things are illegal that we have all of this tremendous pressure on people to try to get them hooked because the rewards are so great for the people doing the hooking. The way this would have a, a really big effect is that we would empty the jails mm -hmm. of all of the heroin users, all of the crack users, all of the marijuana users, and then there would be room in the jails, in the prisons, and in law enforcement resources and in the courts for the rapists, the child molesters, the murderers, the thugs that are terrorizing people on the streets today who are getting out on early releases, who are plea bargaining, and who are able to walk the streets because we have to fill up the jails with marijuana smokers and heroin users and people like that. You have to make a decision. There are not enough prisons in this country, and there isn't enough money to build enough prisons to house everybody. It's true, and I find it a very profound argument. But if drugs were readily available, and certainly a lot cheaper than they are now in the black market, how many more addicts would we have? And I would say that on the one hand, you would have some more addicts because they would no longer be put off by the danger involved, and they might want to try it. But on the other hand, you would have far fewer addicts because nobody would be pushing the drugs on them anymore. 
nobody would be stomping on a street corner or, or on a schoolyard or other places. So you would have a trade-off. Which way it would go, I, I don't know. All I know is it couldn't be worse than it is today. Today we have streets that are unlivable. It wasn't this way in the 1950s. I used to. Uh, How can you be sure that it's drugs that's driving it and not a sociological change? I mean, we've got youngsters. You look at their eyes, and it's almost like there's no soul in there. And the, the price of life is near zero. Uh, there was a day you'd go in, and uh, there was at least some honor among thieves. They'd go into a 7-Eleven, they'd rob the guy, take the money, and leave. Now they rob the guy, take the money, and shoot him to see what it feels like to kill somebody. Oh, I agree with you, and there are. I think there is a triad here that there are three things that are influencing this. One we've discussed is, is the drug war. The second is welfare, which is bred entirely by the federal government. We didn't have this kind of welfare problem until the federal government got into welfare with both feet in the 1960s and the war on poverty. And the third leg of the, of the triad is education. And the greatest thing we can do for a family that wants to educate its children is to repeal the income tax so that that family can choose any school in the city to take that child to, any private school, any religious school, any school that it wants, because they will have the money that's now being bled from them by the federal government. Uh, if they want a school that uh, has excellence in, in education, they can get that. If they want a school that has a cheaper education but strong discipline, they can get that. They can choose for themselves. Today they can't do that because they don't have the money. So I think it is very important to get the federal government out of welfare, get the federal government out of education, get the federal government out of crime control, and more than anything else, repeal the income tax so families have control over their own lives again. When you said crime control, you meant with respect to drugs. Oh, I mean with respect to everything. Oh. All crime oh. is local. Every crime takes place in the jurisdiction of a police department or a sheriff's department. Having the federal government involved in, in uh, crime busting is the worst possible thing that could happen, and the Founding Fathers knew that, and they were absolutely adamant against the idea of a federal police force. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Harry Brown. Good morning. Hi, Harry. This is Brett. I'm from Denver. Say my children get addicted on drugs. Now, is the United States government ready to pay for the rehabilitation? No. Is it now? Is it now with a war on drugs? Whatever it is you fear from ending the war on drugs are just the same things that are existing now already with the war on drugs. He's saying your children's addiction, if it should come, is your problem, not the federal government's. And yeah. that's the way it is now, and that's the way it would be if the war on drugs were repealed. Uh, it wouldn't change that in any way whatsoever. Nobody is going to protect your children from drugs except you. Nobody has an interest in it. Nobody has the same self-interest in that, that that you do. You can't farm this out to the federal government. You can't farm it out to your schools. You can't farm it out to anybody else. But what I'd like to do is to give you the tools to be able to do this, the tools that are being taken away from you now by a terribly oppressive income tax, by regulations that take away your earning power at work, by hidden taxes that run up the price of everything that you buy, to try to give you control over your life again so that you have the time to work with your children and to teach them the values that you believe in, and to be able to afford to put them in a private school where they can be reinforced in those values that you want to teach them. These are the tools that you don't have now that have been taken away from you, and I want to give them back to you so that you do have a chance to protect your children. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Harry Brown. Hi. Hi, Art. Um, thanks for having uh, Harry on the, on the program. And sure. Everything sounds good to me, but I do have a problem with this. I think there should be some control of drugs because of the vulnerability, the curiosity, the peer pressure of children and young people. They can't be trusted to not delve into drugs because they're immature and they don't know what they're getting into. I think there should be some control in that respect. Well, you're absolutely right that that curiosity exists, and that's why they get involved in drugs today with the control that exists. The control has not stopped that, and it has not prevented uh, teenagers and others from acting on that curiosity when they want it. The government is incapable of stopping the drug trade. That's the first thing we have to recognize. So one of the options is not that there will be no drugs in America. There are going to be drugs in America. The question is, do we want them handled by criminals, gang warfare, and drive-by shootings, or do we want it handled peacefully by companies that are legitimate companies like the drugstore on the corner and other people who, who do not go around shooting their competitors?